What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the show. We got a few things lined up today. We got to talk about these Packers, this first playoff matchup, the game plan, the quarterback duel. But of course, we got to touch on the Cowboys and the Eagles for choking. Welcome to Showtime 49. Showtime 49. All right, man, we back. So let's get right into it. First, let's let's address some of this Brock Purdy hate, man. What's up with this? Now, I know we all been hearing what's been going on with Brock. I mean, there's been people coming out here saying, oh, there's eight quarterbacks left. He's the seven of them are elite or really good. And then there's Brock Purdy. I'm like, wait. Out of all them quarterbacks that's that's left, and I get it, they are good. But let's not act like Brock's numbers weren't better than all of them. Let's not let's not do that. And it seems to be the more narrative is that he's still not a game changer. Is he's a product of what's around him and his super awesome team offense, defense were fully loaded. All the jazz. That's cool. But it seems like people forgot that we had this team with Jimmy Garoppolo. And nobody was as confident as we are right now. Jimmy Garoppolo wasn't, he never made it to a Pro Bowl. Brock's going to be there. I mean, all his numbers, breaking records, all the stuff. It's like, you got to give him his kudos when it's time. And now's the time. This guy's in his second year. I, I just really find it hard to fathom how you can just continue to keep talking about all these other quarterbacks like they're so much better than Brock Purdy, even though his numbers are better than theirs. Like, come on, people. Like, if you just want something to say, that's cool. But don't act like you really know Brock Purdy or you really know how the Niners do. If you don't, you really don't. If you're saying stuff like that, you really clearly aren't watching football. You're not watching it because of the greats. Like, Steve Young and all them, they sitting down with Brock Purdy. They believe in him, not just because they're Niners. There's other quarterbacks, Kurt Warner and all this stuff, all the, plenty of other quarterbacks that are Super Bowl winners that say they see things in Brock Purdy that they don't see all the time. And they also say that Brock has been playing really, really good football. They say he's super accurate. He's super smart. He can read a defense like nobody's business. So, hey. I'm going to need all of them to calm down because they really don't want to get into this, like really, really dig deep and get into this. They really don't because these numbers is going to blow you away. And his, and his play on the field has clearly blown everyone away. Now, I understand like he's had a few bad games where when he falls, it's really bad. I mean, when he has a bad game, it's bad. Now, maybe that's it. Maybe that's what they're focused on. I don't know. But to say that there's seven really good quarterbacks, and then there's just Brock Purdy left. That is mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. We act like we haven't seen Brock in the playoffs before. We just seen it last year. It wasn't the greatest, but we still were winning. And last time I checked, ain't, ain't, ain't that what matters? Ain't that the thing that matters? Because we haven't won in a very long time. Now, I said I was gonna talk about the Eagles and the Cowboys. And um I am because the Cowboys, they suck. Yes. Thank you. I'm so glad y'all out the playoffs because y'all was just going to have a date with us later just to get, get embarrassed again. You know, so good job, Packers. We're taking them out. Good job, Jordan Love, doing what you got to do. But just understand, my boy, that this is a different week. As you heard, Shanahan, he started preparing for y'all in the second quarter while y'all was still focused on the Cowboys. So we already got the leg up on that. I understand that y'all also have momentum yes you guys have been playing great recently and jordan love has been one of the top quarterbacks if not the best since like week 12 i understand that but he hasn't played the defense like the 49ers he hasn't played us and that's what i always say to every team i don't care who y'all been playing 
because y'all not the top of the upper echelon right now. That's who we are. That's who the Ravens are. The That's the only team where anybody can say anything to me at all. I won't say nothing about the Ravens right now because they smacked us. But do I believe I saw some good things in that game? Absolutely. Were we moving the ball? Absolutely. Shoot, we had more, more yards than them. But the ball didn't go our way. You know, Brock threw a pick, and then he knows a bunch more picks after that. But those tip passes, whatever, yes, he still threw them. They went out of his hands. And that was, to me, that's still his fault for some of them. A couple of them. Not all of them. But if you throw the ball and the next person to touch it is the defender, then that's that's on you. But your arm gets hit, you know, whatever. That None of that stuff matters. So that's the only team that I'm focused on as far as any fans or whatever got something to say. But right now we're focused on the Packers. They The guys look ready. They look locked in. They look like they're eager to get on the football field. Because let's remember. They haven't played that much in the last three weeks. We talk about Brock. Is is he going to be rusty? But according to Shanahan, no. They said they've been pushing him like normal. He's been coming in on his off days, going to, going to kick it with the guys, doing extra stuff off schedule. To me, it sounds like this means a lot to everyone, including Brock Purdy. Because I don't know how many of y'all going on y'all off days. But I for sure don't want to go in on my off day. When I'm off, I like to be off. This is a different story. I, I appreciate you, Brock. I really do. You know, because we're going to need you, bro. We can't have you get hurt. We don't want to see Sam Darnold. Mm-mm. We ain't got no options. You are the option. You need to stay healthy and let's ball out, my dude. And I believe that. I believe that. And I just wish all these haters would calm down on Brock Purdy because it's ridiculous. Now. Thank you, Eagles. Thank you so much for just showing who you are, which kind of felt like frauds a little bit. You know, let's just really think about it. So y'all start off the season, what, 10 and 1? But those games, like, you guys are barely winning. Barely. That catches up with you eventually. And we just saw and witnessed that. Because y'all came to the Niner game riding high talking mess, talking about let's line them up. Let's see, man for man. Let's see who's what. And we beat the crap out of y'all from beginning to end. We just totally obliterated you guys. And apparently we obliterated your season because you went one and six after that. Oh, oh. and now you're out in the wild card? Wasn't y'all Super Bowl contenders? Wasn't Jalen Hurts an MVP candidate? What happened? The Niners happened. This happened. And that is what the Packers are going to have to deal with. Jordan Love. Yes. He's playing amazing. He absolutely is. Like I said in the beginning, he ain't played us yet. He ain't seen Fred Warner yet. You know what I'm saying? He he ain't seen Nick Bosa yet. He ain't seen Chase Young yet. He ain't seen Charvarius Mooney Ward yet. You know, I don't, I can keep going. Because there's a lot. There's a lot. And we doing our thing. But this is the thing here. Like, they're young. We're veterans who have been here before. We have a major goal in hand. If y'all was to lose, if Green Bay was to lose to the Niners, it would be considered a successful season. If the Niners were to lose to Green Bay, all hell would break loose. What's going on? Who choked? Who made the bad decisions? Like, there's no, we can't lose. The Niners absolutely cannot lose this game. It'll just look bad for the entire organization all the way around. Fingers would be getting pointed. It would be a, another wild offseason, which I'm sure, as Niner fans, as faithful, we're tired of seeing that. We we don't want the drama field off seasons anymore. We want it to be normal, you know, like we know who our guys are is coming in and there's no competition and like the main spots and all this mess. Like we don't have to worry about none of that no more. That's what we want. So we cannot lose this game. This battle between Brock Purdy and Jordan Love is going to be real. We're like 10 point favorites. 
I might not necessarily agree with that just because of them riding high and then the momentum and all this stuff. But young teams tend to mess up and make mistakes because, you know, they get a little overexcited. And veterans tend to tend to calm down in certain situations where they understand the game and what's been going on because they've been there before. That's the importance of experience. You've been there before. You've already handled it. You've got those jitters out the way. And now you come in to play real ball. We got that six ring in our sights. It's been in our sights for a long time. Can we please get it over with? Because honestly, it's really hard to talk to Cowboy fans and talk mess about them when they won a Super Bowl more recent than we have. It was just a year, but still, they still did it. So they their comeback to us could easily be when the last time you guys won. All this rah-rah, y'all bullies and the whole everything like that, it could easily be the same thing. We haven't finished. They haven't finished. So can we finish? So we don't got to be in that conversation no more? Please, let's get that over with. I believe in Brock Purdy's accuracy. I do. I believe in his baller mentality. He's not afraid of anything. It seems that way. Jordan Love started out the season shakier. But since week 12, the man has been looking real good. I mean, he's making, he's looking like a game changer. Because he's throwing the ball off one foot in the air. Tight. I mean, he's been throwing some little ones that's been moving through defenders and bam right to his receiver touchdown you know i'm like wow the confidence to throw some of them passes is unreal and um uh, yeah i got to give him his credit jordan love has been playing absolutely amazing but i still got the niners winning this game without it being too scary too scary their best bet i think would be to jump on us early because as we know, this season, we don't play well from behind. Literally haven't won any close games. All of our games are won by double digits when we win. So I see, I kind of do see why the, the spread is 10 points. I'm going to hope we beat that because I don't want to be in a close game because I haven't seen us win a close game this season because it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened for Brock Purdy. He doesn't play well in those games. He hasn't yet. And I know he has more to prove. Of course he does. It's only his second year, and he's going to have plenty more opportunities for close games to get this handled. And I just don't want it to try it in the playoffs. That's why I wanted it to happen during the season so we could have something to roll with, you know. But now it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. But I feel confident in our guys. I feel confident in our supporting cast. I feel confident in our coaching right now. I think everybody's ready to go. And if the Niners come out here and really put on a show, and really handle the Packers is going to put the league on notice again. And it's going to automatically be like, all right, we're looking forward to the Niners Ravens. The Ravens don't have an easy path though, either. You know, they, they really don't. CJ Stroud is looking great. <laughs> He's looking great. I'm going to say this, man. I'm going to say this. I know this might not be popular, but I'm going to say this. I feel like C.J. Stroud is who we thought Trey Lance was going to be. Me and my boy, Fireman Ronnie, really believe that. We believe that C.J. Stroud is what Trey Lance was supposed to be for us. But, I mean, of course, that's long gone now. But, I mean, just look at them. They almost look like cousins. Like, for real. They look like they could be related. So, but it is what it is. We've moved on. We got Brock. Brock's been playing amazing. To me, he was the MVP candidate. To me, he's a... Top 10 quarterback, probably even better. Top five, according to his stats, he's looking awesome. And he's only going to get better. I don't see Brock getting worse. We were worried about that last year. And then he got better this year. Year three is usually the year. But it seems like it's been accelerated a little bit. Because if year three is supposed to be the year and you had a year two like this, whoo, it should be unanimous, hands down, that this dude is that dude. We don't know that yet. Still plenty of football left to play. He got plenty of career left. Like I said, it's only year two. So let's get into this uh, this coaching a little bit. Now, Shanahan has had everybody's number, it feels like, especially in the NFC, you know, because we're NFC tough, which doesn't seem to be that tough against the AFC teams. But whatever, we're not playing them this week. We're playing Green Bay. So. 
I think we got the advantage. A hundred percent, I think we got the advantage. I just feel that way in every situation. Now, if the game is close, that's when I get a little worried because I'm not too confident in Kyle Shanahan's ability to change the game plan, you know, to work on the fly. Something happens like, oh, mm, let me change this real quick. Let me, I'm not, I haven't really seen that work out great so far. Hence, he doesn't have a Super Bowl ring either. And he should. He should have a couple by now. But he doesn't. You know, and play calling had a lot to do with that. So with all of us getting healthy, I don't think we need to be cute. I think we just need to go in here. I think we need to run this ball, run down their throat. Pause. I think we need to run. I think Brock's still going to have a great game. I mean, it's not like the Cowboys weren't moving on the Packers' defense. They were. Dak threw some picks. You know what I'm saying? Dak was dacking. So Dakota did his thing. So I feel like Shanahan is pretty confident about what's going to happen, but we just don't need to be cute. Like, that's when we get in trouble. It looks good when it works, but when it doesn't, it looks awful. We don't need to. We get in the red zone, give the ball to Christian McCaffrey and let him go run it in for a touchdown. Okay? We don't, we don't need to do all these play actions and fakes and all this. We don't need to do all that. Just go man up straight at them and just go see see what happens see what happens i i can almost guarantee you that is great as christian mccaffrey is gonna find a way in the end zone as great as trent williams is he's gonna find a way to block for him as great as george kittle is and is in blocking he's gonna find a way to to make it happen for him as great as kyle use is in doing all these things like ah, just run the ball don't be cute don't be too cute please Let's not do that, especially in the red zone, especially. My goodness. So I'm happy. I'm excited. I think this game is going to be a great one for us Niner fans. I think we're going to be celebrating Saturday night, all night. Y'all don't get too dangerous out there, but have a good time. Because, hey, at the end of the day, it's the playoffs. We've been waiting all season for this. And here we are. Number one seed, bye week, and home field advantage. This upset can't happen. The Cowboys did what they what they did. That's great. We different. We smacked them. Let's continue. Jordan Love is not Aaron Rodgers, but he does some Aaron Rodgers things. But I honestly feel that the Niners are going to take care of business. I feel like we should come out early, jump on their necks, and then make them have an uphill battle the rest of the game. That is when we are at our best. So y'all know, I'm going to be tapping in after that game. Absolutely. Tomorrow, I'm going to holla at y'all.